Welcome to another Dresden Files review, particularly number four, and it's called The Summer's Night. And I'm still wearing my cowboy hat uh, in honor of Dresden being the guy that wears the hat in the front of every single cover. It's pretty great. This is the part of the story where I really feel like the story just goes straight up from here. This is one of the best stories I've read in a reasonable amount of time. It's been the best thing I've read since Game of Thrones. And it's been just a lot of fun. Online, I see the first couple of books being up to uh, roughly six or seven, being called the Foundation Era, the beginning of Dresden. And this is where all of the things come together and then we finally move on to the main conflict. Now, I'm in the middle of that, so I'm in book four, and I would suppose that that means that we're in the middle of the Foundation Era, but to me, it doesn't feel that way. The first few books really did feel like Foundation Era. They really felt like books that really didn't have anything on their own, and it felt more like they were novels that you just kind of breeze through to get to the good stuff, which begins later on, starting now, or maybe starting a little bit later. And so when we finally came to this story, I feel like we finally came into the fruition of Dresden. This is some of the best story arcs that I've seen so far in the entire series, and people say that this isn't even one of the better books. This is one of the better books of this era, but isn't even close to the better books of the later eras. There's a few different points of the story that I really feel like makes Dresden Dresden. The main thing being Dresden's own character, as well as his relationship to the supernatural and his relationship to his job. Those are the few things that really make this series special and make it stand out in my mind. There's also a few character relationships, particularly his relationship with Karen Murphy and Susan. These two characters are really, really important to Dresden as a whole. The really big part of the story that suffers compared to the previous stories is the lack of his relationships between these key characters. So I will be talking about that a little bit later into the video, but for now I do want to talk about the positives because there's a lot of positives compared to the previous books. The biggest one that I've seen is, like I said before, this seems like the transition between the Foundation era and the really good era of Dresden books. The stuff that we get within this story is way beyond the stuff that we used to see. The plots of previous Dresden books have been reasonably messy, with a lot of really small pockets of supernatural entities. Finally, in the third book, Grave Peril, we see a lot more interesting supernatural uh, people, uh, particularly the vampire corpse, and when we're introduced to that, I feel like it wasn't very well done, it wasn't written very well, and so it really didn't get any emotion out of me. But it was pretty interesting to see all of that uh, begin to rise out of the story. But then if you come to this story, this one in particular, it's not just the vampire courts that are here, it's also the summer and winter court and the fairies and, and this entire realm above the clouds. This All this stuff is coming together and it's really, really interesting because it's this giant way of throwing us into the world of Dresden. And this is done way better than anything else. It also really displays a very good amount of war and amount of uh, kingdoms and stuff that really makes the story feel more epic than the previous ones. So we're getting into the bits that are way more exciting, large scale, more personal, things that seem to transcend what these series used to be about. This story also does a really good job of swaying in and out of the supernatural throughout the whole narrative. So we do have this incredibly interesting mix of supernatural and Chicago, because we start with the story being reasonably in Chicago. It's pretty, uh, a pretty Chicago story, and it also does start with this really big entrance into the big physical realm, just so that we can finally understand the whole situation. And it was a great recap, and I very much enjoyed it, because people like me, we don't really like understand names, and we don't really understand what happened in the previous book, until it's all summarized, and that gives it a whole new meaning to me. One of the better parts about this story is that at the beginning of this narrative, Dresden does have a character, unlike the beginning of the series. The reason I say this is because at the beginning of the series, he did have a good enough character to be passable, and that's what I generally see in most novels in general. He does have these quips, and he is funny, and he's pretty quick, and he's strong. These are very blanket statements that don't really get into the personal narrative of Dresden. At this point, enough has happened to him and, his, uh, and, and to his friends and to his family and to his people around him that we finally understand a deeper level of Dresden. And you see him right at the first scene, uh, one of my favorite scenes from the book, it's just him in the state that he's in, just wandering around in a park. And it was just one of the most powerful scenes in the entire book because it was a character. And it was a character that we just didn't see until now. Like I said before, I did have a problem with the character relationships, as there are none. There really are so few character relationships. In this book, New characters are introduced, just a bunch of side characters. And to me, most of these side characters, I'm sure they're gonna keep coming in, but these were not so good. They, they weren't very good side characters. There are a couple of changelings, which I found to be fine, right? The introduction to them was fine, but then they became a very integral part of the story and then stuff happened to them. And I, I just couldn't make myself care because I didn't know them and they appeared so late and they were so hostile right from the start. They're, they really had almost no character at all. Other than that, there's no important uh, character relationship that appears in the entire story. Uh, but then there's also the relationship with Susan and Susan's relationship was really, really tough because there's a very important thing that happens between Harry and Susan in the previous book. And in this book, we kind of see the fallout of that. And the fallout of that is so uninteresting right now 
because it's interesting, right? The first scene, great. It worked out. That was very well integrated into the story and his character right from the start. And that was great. But after that, it had so little of an impact to the character and to the story. Um, it did have one small impact later on, but this impact was so useless and it was so negligible that, you know, the impact came and then he, and then he kind of thought about it for a while and then the impact just fled away because he realized, you know, that isn't gonna work. So it, it really, her presence was not even any good in the story. So those are my main complaints. It's just that the character relationship are not very good uh, and the kind of balance between the character work and the plot feels disconnected. That's the only thing I could say uh, apart from the writing being a little bit bad. Still my same criticisms from the previous book are the same here. The writing does seem to be getting better. This book is way better in the writing but it is reasonably bad. I, I wouldn't even, I would give this writing a one star because a lot of the stuff that goes on, it's very, uh, it feels like some of the thoughts that are put in really break apart the tension of the scene and the realism and it really breaks just my understanding of the story. At the same time, like I said before, there's two parts of the story. There's the magic and supernatural, uh, the heroic aspect, and then there's a the detective aspect. The heroic aspect is great. This is the first story that really does that really, really well. Once again, the detective aspect is garbage. It's no good at all, and I would not read this if you're interested in detective stories. The first two books are uh, mostly detective stories, and even then they're not very good, but here it kind of throws away the entire detective story. It, it is a detective story, really, like that's the underlying story, but it's not a good detective story. It doesn't do that well, and I'm hoping that this is the part that really improves. I want to see a good detective story, and I'll, I, I want to see something where we can really put together the pieces before we're, this is revealed to us. And that's the kind of thing that it lacks. It's not a detective story, even though it, it's supposed to be. Yeah, those are all my main criticisms. Uh, that's all I have to say about it. But by far, this is the best story in the Dresden uh, Files so far. It's just a great story because of the amount of epicness, the amount of battles, the character work done. It's a far more interesting and far more engaging story. It's way more cohesive overall than the previous stories, and it makes more sense. And I think that's the big part to hammer down. The stories so far have been uh, really juvenile. They've been simple, weak, fine. I've, I've, go, I've gone back, I've changed most of them to one stars. Then I changed uh, Grave Peril to two stars. I'm, I might put that down to one. This is the first one I've given three stars. I might have gone down and uh, in the future, uh, whenever you're seeing this, I might have gone and made it two stars again, but this book is way better. This is such a significant difference from the previous books that it's just awesome. So that's my review for Dresden Files Summer Night. So uh, that's pretty much all my review for today. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and comment down your thoughts of this book or my review. I would appreciate both of them. Subscribe if you want to see more Dresden Files review. I'll be reviewing all the books as soon as I can. I don't think I'll be reading Peace Talks as it comes out, but Battlegrounds, I'll do my best for that. I think I can do that. So that's pretty much it. So thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.